Next one, image sampler, anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing is another one that, you know, it's interesting. I've seen both sides of the equation on this one as well. But basically the concept of anti-aliasing has to do with the method of blurring the pixels and specifically the pixel edges. We're all on these LCD screens that have square pixels. And if you draw a diagonal line across square pixels, you're gonna get basically a stair step effect on both sides of the line, right? It's not like we have diagonal pixels. We're creating these little steps. And so anti-aliasing is the different algorithms that have been developed in different filters to blur those lines so that you don't see the jagged edges when you draw a diagonal line. Again, this happens in render time. And more often than not, it's blurring lines, but it's also blurring color and blurring light. You know, it's defining the edges of two things coming together visually on the screen, you know, like a red surface against a blue surface. What does that look like and how do they blend together? There's a camp that likes to basically blur that or do the anti-aliasing at render time. But I've also seen 3D artists that don't do anti-aliasing at all. When we render our renderings at high resolution, the anti-aliasing, it's almost non-perceivable. And that's why they kind of turn it off and say, you never see it anyway, right? Your rendering is so high resolution that you don't perceive it. It's kind of like looking at your phone screens, right? Like there's still square pixels in it, but your eye can't perceive it anymore. So that's sort of the thinking behind it. I usually keep it on unless I am rendering really, really big, then I usually turn it off because you can perceive it. It does take a little bit of extra render time. So if you're you know, trying to minimize your render time as much as possible, or you don't really you know, need to blur those things, you can try it. It's an easy switch on and off. Area is the most common one. And then size, this is 1.5 pixels. So it's basically going to blur a pixel and a half around each edge that it considers to be needing that effect. There's different types. Box is kind of like, you know, if you go to Gaussian blur in Photoshop and you'll see blur, there's Gaussian box and all different kinds. That's very similar. It uses the same algorithm that Photoshop one is using. Catmull, ROM, you guys know Pixar? You know Ed Catmull? He's one of the CEOs. He wrote this because he started in computer animation. And so there's a lot of legacy stuff. You know, there's a lot of things that, you know, a lot of different old rendering engines use from these guys that started computer animation, basically. So this one's actually a pretty good one because it has a nice blend of not just Gaussian blur, but has a little bit of sharpness to it. There's no right or wrong answer here. Experiment with it but basically that's what it is and that's what it does. You guys can have some fun with it and you know, zoom in an area and render to see what the difference is, find the one you like and go with it.